Hello, it's Dr. Ben here, and I'm going to tell you about two of the coolest science experiments that I have ever come across, and a bit about the science behind them too. First up, I'm going to tell you about ants in space. Yes, you heard me right. This was an experiment run by Deborah Gordon, a professor of biology at Stanford University, and they actually sent ants to the International Space Station. This was an experiment looking at how ants perform collective search behaviour in microgravity. I got the chance to chat to Deborah a little bit about this experiment, and she told me all about uh, why we are interested in collective search behaviour and how ants are solving this problem. And I came across this term, the internet. What on earth is the internet? You're about to find out. Here's Professor Deborah Gordon. The internet is a way of thinking about how one kind of ant regulates how many ants go out to forage. And it's very similar to the way on the internet we regulate how data flows. So these ants, uh, harvester ants, use the rate of interaction to decide whether to forage. An ant that's going out to look for food doesn't leave unless it gets enough contacts, enough opportunities to smell ants coming in with food. In the same way, when you press the key to send an email message, the data go out in packets. And the way that it works is that each packet doesn't leave your computer until it meets enough acknowledgments from the router saying that the previous packets had the bandwidth to go on. So it's the same kind of regulation through positive feedback, both in TCP IP, which is the protocol that regulates bandwidth on the internet, and how these ants regulate foraging. So we called it Anternet because they're using the same kind of process. You know, I've, just, I've just thought of another term as well, because obviously ant astronauts are about antronauts. That's right, yes. <laughs> Not quite yeah. as good as the ants. Yeah. No yeah. one is good. But. Well, the astronauts really liked, <laughs> the, the, the human astronauts really enjoyed doing this experiment because sure, yeah. it was pretty yeah. interesting, and uh, uh, they reported back that they had a really good time working with the ants on the ISS. Check it out, Deborah Gordon's work there. Okay, experiment number two in my top two coolest experiments ever. We're going to turn to Dr. Lewis Halsey now from the University of Roehampton in London. Uh, and this is an experiment that used parkour athletes uh, to research the movement of great apes. And here's Dr. Halsey telling us a little bit more about that. Take orangutans, which are perhaps the, the archetypal tree-dwelling ape, right? They live up in the trees, the trees bend, they're flexible, uh, so they, they, can, they have the potential to sap the energy from these orangutans as they're moving around in the trees. And, okay, so we started to look at this. Now the problem is, you know, we can go into the field. First of all, it takes days to even find an orangutan. You've got to see that. To even observe one is hard, right? And then you've got to, like, capture it, which is ethically unsound. Except even if you did capture it, then you put a data logger on it, like I was saying earlier, to measure something, its body movement. Well, all the orangutan's going to do is take the data logger off <laughs> and break the data logger. You know, it's going to break the data logger. So, so we said, right, okay, we're not even going to try. Okay, somebody should try, okay, but it's not going to be me. Uh, life's too short. So we asked parkour athletes, yes, yeah, street gymnasts, whatever you want to call them. We said, will you mimic as best you can orangutans in the lab so we got them into that the lab was a gym a massive like a, a gymnasium where your gym g gymnasts would do their do their stuff and we got them doing various activities which somewhat simulate movement in an arboreal forest and we asked them to make the sort of movements you know swinging from the hands and this sort of thing that became a, a tractable viable way to look at orangutans unfortunately i didn't get to go to borneo that's the that's the <laughs> one downside Make sure you check out more of Dr. Lewis Halsey's work if you're interested. He's from the University of Roehampton, London. So that was my top two coolest experiments that I've come across in science. But I'm going to leave you with this little area to ponder. De-extinction. Fans of Jurassic Park, this is for you. Now, I was talking to Professor Michael Sweet, who was writing up a textbook, and in it he was covering some areas of science that sound pretty much like sci-fi. Here he is. In the book, we, we talk about other sort of uh, sci-fi aspects, uh, like uh, obviously everybody knows about things like Jurassic Park, um, uh, and that stemmed from a lot of research which was done in the 1980s um, about uh, cloning uh, extinct animals, so getting this ancient DNA uh, from uh, bones or uh, any particular types of fossils, uh, and it's particularly um, uh, relevant uh, with animals 
uh, captured in a permafrost. So mammoths is a, is a key answer there. And the science is actually there to show that we can do it. We can actually clone a mammoth and we can bring uh, that species uh, back if we wish. There's, there's recent advances uh, where they've actually got viable uh, DNA from uh, recent um, excavations of frozen mammoths um, up in Siberia and, and places like that. Um, and science says we can, uh, ethics probably says we shouldn't. There's obviously that sort of aspect to, to take into to context. Well, thanks for listening. I've been Dr. Ben Makin. Bye for now.